Okay, hi folks. In this video, I'm going to be solving some more questions from the November 2021 DP Physics HL Paper 2 exam paper. So in this video, I've, I've collected all the questions that have to do with motion, sort of pure mechanics, topic 2, topic 6, maybe even topic 10. There are only two questions on this paper, so let's just get started. The first one is the cl classic mechanics topic 2 question. It's about a ball that is being released from rest at a certain height. So they they give us a graph, a velocity versus time graph. Um, they mention to us that air resistance is neg negligible. Okay, pay attention to that. They also give us the value of G, and they're telling us that it reaches the floor after one second. Okay, so one second, this is after one second. So this is when it reaches the floor. Now it looks as though the velocity it has is around minus 10. Now you can see it's not quite at minus 10, right? It's a little bit um, above that. And that's of course because we know, well, the velocity something has when it's undergoing a constant acceleration is given by this Suvat formula. And if I know the acceleration is 9.8 after one second and being released from rest, I have a velocity of 9.8 meters per second. So it actually has a velocity of minus 9.8 after one second, and that is when it hits the floor. Okay, but the first question is to determine the height h. Now, um, this one is relatively simple. It's just a Suvat formula. Um, remember, s equals one half at squared plus ut. And we already know the acceleration and the time it takes for it to hit the ground. So h is really just the displacement there. Um, so one half and 9.8. You know, here we're, n we're not worrying too much about the signs. That's always um, a bit um, sort of discomforting to many students that, you know, sometimes we pay attention to the signs and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we're just sort of dealing with magnitudes. Or, or in this case, you can also just think of the positive direction as now being down. So we have a positive um, acceleration of 9.8 and a positive displacement down h from a starting point of zero. So yeah, there are lots of different ways of sort of looking at this, um, but nevertheless, we work out the height um, by doing this and we get 4.9 meters. You could also have looked at energy conservation. You could also have used another Suvat formula. So lots of different approaches just to show you like the energy conservation approach, right? There's no air resistance, so we know the potential energy is going to be converted fully to kinetic energy before it hits the ground. And then um, we get H as V squared over 2G. And then you just have to plug the right value of, of V in there with G to again get 4.9. That's the energy approach. And you could even also have used you know, 2AS equals V squared minus U squared. Um, and u is again zero, s is the height, a is g, and then you can rearrange and, and you actually get the same formula as that. Uh, so there you go, right? Lots of different approaches. Label the time and velocity graph using the letter m. Um, we have to label the point where the ball reaches the maximum rebound, rebound height. Okay, <clears throat> so you have to really understand what's going on right so at when time is zero the ball is released so it's falling down uh, increasing its speed uh, the velocity is becoming more and more negative so you know here we're thinking of down as negative then it hits the ground um, after one second and of course then it very uh, very quickly decelerates and reaches a zero velocity instantaneously at that point in time and then um, it starts increasing uh, its speed upwards to a positive velocity um, and then when it when it leaves the floor it has a maximum velocity of five okay so it sort of um, bounces off the floor with a velocity of five meters per second and then it starts flying up into the air and then it's only gravity that is the force acting on it and that constantly um, accelerates it downwards okay so it's going to start decelerating it again 
and um, it loses speed, right? It decreases its speed as it as it moves up to its maximum height after the rebound, which occurs here after 1.6 seconds. Then it's instantaneously at rest at the maximum point before it then starts falling down again. Okay, so make sure you know how to read these motion graphs properly. State the acceleration of the ball at the maximum rebound height. Well, that's of course just g minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, you know, when something only moves under the influence of gravity close to the surface of, of the Earth, and if air resistance is negligible, it always has this constant acceleration, 9.8 pointing down. Draw on the axes a graph to show the variation with time. Um, from the instant it rebounds from the floor, okay, so it's at height zero, and then it starts moving upwards, okay, constant acceleration downwards. We know it's going to be a parabola. It's going to increase its height, but eventually um, gravity slows it down until it reaches an instantaneous velocity of zero at the maximum height. And that is, we just had to draw it until that point. This is when it reaches maximum rebound height. And then, of course, it's going to fall down again. That's going to be the other half of the parabola. So this is half a parabola. There you go. OK, estimate the loss in the mechanical energy of the ball as a result of the collision. OK, so it's not losing any mechanical energy when it's moving through the air because there's no air resistance. But of course, um, as it interacted with the floor, there was some mechanical energy lost and it's you know, been converted into thermal energy in the floor and in the ball. Um, so how do we estimate that? Well, we could just focus on the kinetic energy, look at the change in kinetic energy. You know, when, it, uh, when it hits the ground, it has a kinetic energy of half mv squared. And then, you know, when it leaves the ground again, the speed is a little bit lower, five meters per second. So we just have to work that out. So, and we're given the mass, 0 0.250 kilograms, and it had a speed of 9.8 right before it hit the floor. It has a speed of five on its way up. And then we need to just work that out. And what did I get? Okay, just working it out. Yeah, around 8.9 joules. That is the loss in mechanical energy. Determine the average force. Okay, you know, it's classic IB, um, DP, physics, mechanics question. Average force, we know the average force is the rate of change of momentum. And we can easily work out the change in momentum. That's just the mass times the change in velocity over time. So we've got the mass and the change in velocity goes from 9.8 to 5, right? So that's um, a total change of 14.8 meters per second. And uh, that happened. And if we go back to the graph, right? So we're, we're looking at this section here, right? You know, the very steep section from 1 to 1.1. So you can see it uh, takes 0.1 second for it to interact with the floor. And in that 0.1 second, the velocity goes from minus 9.8 to positive 5. So total change in velocity is positive 14.8. Time is 0.1 second. And what do we get from that? We get uh, wait a second, 37 newtons. So that is the average force that the floor exits on the ball in order to change its momentum. So the momentum of the ball was not conserved, right? It didn't have a constant momentum. And why is that? Well, that's because the ball itself as a system is not isolated. There is this external force from the floor that is being exerted on it and it's changing its momentum. So, you know, the quick answer is that um, that the ball itself is not an isolated system. So that uh, should be one valid, uh, valid response. Um, but maybe uh, it's a little bit better to write that there is an external force that is acting on the ball and external forces, they can change the momentum of a system.
it's 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 only like uh, the conservation of momentum only applies to isolated systems and this ball is not an isolated system so we could write you know the ball itself is not an isolated system you know in other words there was we can say an external force was applied to the ball and its momentum changed okay good so um, that was the first question Typical IBDP mechanics question. Uh, not too bad, but uh, yeah, there's always something tricky in these mechanics questions, I find. Um, okay, then the next one, question six, was about, um, it's about Titan, one of the, um, the biggest moon of Saturn. And the first part is topic eight. Um, it's about intensity and um, black body radiation and um, calculating the average surface temperature of Titan. So I'm not going to cover that in this motion video. I'll do that in another video. But the second part of that question is just pure um, Kepler's third law, uh, some, some uh, topic 10 fields and so on. So let's include that in this video. So we have the mass of Titan in terms of the mass of the Earth, the radius of Titan in, ta in terms of the radius of the Earth. And they give us the escape speed from the Earth, and we have to find or show that the escape speed from Titan is that. So you look up the escape speed formula, of course, if you can't remember it. And you can see that the escape speed formula is root 2gm over r, right? Where m is the mass you're escaping, and r is the distance away from the center of that mass. So this is basically um, Titan's mass, and it's the radius of Titan. Uh, okay, but we only know these in terms of the Earth's mass and radius. So let's write that as 2g. Okay, mass of Titan is 0 0.025 times the mass of the Earth, and the radius is 0 0.404 times the radius of the Earth. And then we can see that, oh, well, what we have in here is just the escape velocity of the Earth times this factor, which looks like that. Okay, they don't give us a lot of space in this question, and it's only one mark. So you've got to use some draft paper or just write it on the exam paper like this. And then maybe now we can sort of um, put that in the tiny box they give us, that the escape velocity uh, from the surface of Titan is um, this... 2g m e r e so that's the escape velocity of the earth times this factor so that's escape velocity of the earth right times that factor and that is 11.2 times that factor and that's going to give us the right answer which is around yeah you get sort of 2.79 kilometers per second. I think they should have given us a bit more space to, to do this question. Okay. Um, then it's Kepler's third law. Okay, classic derivation of Kepler's third law. Um, and we have this and we know, of course, that we are just, even though we know Titan is really orbiting Saturn in an, in an elliptical orbit. Okay, so if you take my space science course, you'll learn all about uh, elliptical orbits. Um, but here we're assuming it's just um, a circular orbit. So uh, in, in the DP course, you've only learned about Kepler's third law for circular orbits. So we assume it's a circular orbit. And we know that um, when we're moving in uniform circular motion, there's a centripetal force, which is m v squared over r. That's the typical form we always remember the centripetal force in. And what is the necessary centripetal force? Well, it's the force of gravity acting between Titan and Saturn. And that's that. Okay. Now, because we want to um, obtain Kepler's third law, it's a little bit easier. Instead of using the V squared over R 
as our centripetal acceleration it's a bit more convenient to immediately use the 4 pi squared r over period squared form of the centripetal acceleration that's in the data booklet so you can just write that down immediately like this this is you know just um this is newton's second law right this is just m times a equals the net force okay just newton's second law And what we do now is we just rearrange and we just want to isolate t squared. So we do that relatively easily by saying let's multiply r squared over and I divide by gm multiply by t squared and there you go. Kepler's third law that the square of the period is proportional to the radius cubed. For elliptical orbits the radius becomes the semi-major axis of the ellipse. Okay, and then they give us the um, orbital period T. They give us the orbital radius R, so we have to estimate the mass of Saturn, which is just big M in that equation. So we rearrange this to get that. And the R is 1.2, 10 to the 9 cubed. It's in meters already. Be careful it's not in kilometers. Then you get the wrong answer. G is 6.67. Okay, now T, we have to convert this to seconds. Okay, so we, we need the SI units, meters, and seconds because G is also in sort of SI units, you know, newtons and kilograms and meters. And second is hiding uh, inside that newton. So we need to convert the 15.9 days to seconds, 24 hours in a day, 3,600 seconds in an hour seconds and that's going to be squared don't forget all that and if you plug all that correctly into your calculator you get the correct answer which looks like that okay that was really it those were sort of the the motion questions that I could find on the 2021 HL paper bye bye